up with a mind to come to the house of the Lord this morning. Lord God, you gave us strength in our hands and our feet and our whole body, oh God. And Lord God, we come with Lord God as a living sacrifice, oh God, giving it back to you. We thank you for this service this morning, oh God. Father God, we pray that the Shekinah glory will come in here this morning, oh God. Oh Lord God, we just feel the spirit of the Lord in the atmosphere. We thank you. Lord God, so you said, when two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. So, Lord God, we thank you that you're in the midst this morning, oh God. Father God, we thank you and we pray, you, Lord God, for every, Lord God, ailment this morning, Lord God, for every hardship this morning, oh God, for everything, Lord God, that people need this morning, oh God. Lord God, we know that you're able to do it. And Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that when we leave this place, oh God, we will not be the same, oh God. Lord God, we'll say that we had a touch by you, oh God. So Father God, we thank you. We praise you and we bless, Lord God, the people that are coming from the north, the south, and west, oh God. Oh Lord God, if they're searching for somewhere to go this morning, oh God. Oh Lord God, that they'll find their way here, oh God. Oh Lord God, because they need something from you, oh God. Just a word from you this morning, oh God. So Father God, we thank you.
another day the Lord has given us. We ought to give him praise. Hallelujah. Praise seems to I hear the chains falling. God is so good to us. This morning, good morning, Evangelist Trice. Good to see you this morning. Give the Lord a praise. Thank you. Our scripture this morning comes from the 27th Division of Psalm. And we're reading verses 1 through 5. And then we're going to skip down to verse 14. Psalm 27, beginning at verse 1 through 5, then verse 14. God is good, isn't he? Just the fact that we are here lets us know he's a good God. Amen? Yes, let's give the Lord a praise, y'all. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and failed. Though a host should encamp around me, against me rather, my heart shall not fear. Though war sh should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. In verse 14, Minister Collier, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Suggestions in the box um, that's outside. 
as you go out, please, please feel free to put speakers, colors, um, suggestions for our women's conference, please, please feel free to do that. We, we solicit your suggestions. All items that you signed up for, please have at the church by 10 a.m. on Saturday. All items that were signed up for on our Founders Day meal, please um, have them here by Saturday at 10 a.m. Mother Taylor will be here um, to get those items on Saturday at 10 a.m. And if you haven't, please sign up. Um, the, the sign up sheet will be outside as you go out today. So please sign up for something um, to go towards our Founders Day meal. Amen? Amen. At this time, that is all the announcements that I have, but um, Sister Jean is going to come further and give some further announcements for Pastor. Amen? Amen. Good morning again, Stonewell. Good morning. The first announcement that I have is actually coming from our youth ministry. Um, the youth ministry has joined forces with our Georgia 4-H department here in Upson County, and we have started a book club, which is a literacy program, which will help to um, encourage our children to start back reading. We have already received our first book, we've had our first meeting, and I will have more information coming forward. We are targeting grades four through six, and also, if they complete this program, they have an opportunity to attend camp this summer at a reduced rate. They have afforded us with 10 slots that we can fill. And normally, the camp is like 300, over $300, but each child can go for $25. So we want you to definitely encourage your kids to participate in this. And even if they are having problems with reading. They don't have to be grades four through six. We want to encourage you to invite them to come. Uh, we are looking at having our meetings Sundays after church. We will provide a light lunch for them as well as go over our book. And like I said, we've already started reading our first book. And one of the young gentlemen that showed up, he was not for it. And uh, his mother had called and said that he is already on his fourth chapter. Right. So we are really excited about doing this. So sign up, see Ms. Rose after church. If you know somebody or if your child is in need of help, please, 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 because we want to definitely get them back into reading and comprehension skills, and this is very important, okay? Um, from the pastor's desk, we are embarking upon our seven-year Founders Day. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. We are definitely excited. Our guest speaker will be none other than Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, who is the presiding prelate of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the 6th District here in the state of Georgia. And Please believe me, that is a big deal. He don't come out for everybody. So um, we want to encourage you all to come. As Minister Lyons stated, our program will start at 10. You know what you have been asked to do. Pastor is asking that everyone be on post, praise team, choir, hospitalities, deacons, trustees, musicians. You know what you have been asked to do. So we do it the Stonewell way. And so we are asking that you come and let's have a high time in the Lord. Let's show the Lord that we are indeed glad and honored that he has afforded us with this time. And I have not seen, you know, his, his, what he would say is have not heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for us here. And the blessings are coming in. So even if, you know, he wanted to let you know that if you want to team up with somebody, let's, we know what we have stated that this uh, venture is for. And so we want to make sure that we get as close to our goal. And, you know, Pastor will do a run around this church if we hit our goal. So we thank you and we hope that you will have a wonderful rest of the day. Be blessed. Thank you. Praise team. And after the praise team, um, we will hear from none other than our very own Minister Yashika Walker. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you just want God? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Nothing else will do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Anything that is not like you, God, we don't want it. Hallelujah.
Yes, Lord, I just want you. Thank you for the confirmation, Lord. Thank you for the confirmation, Lord. As I was entering into this place on this morning, dear Lord, that's the song you gave me, dear Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for the confirmation, dear Lord. I just thank you for the opportunity to be here, Lord. I just thank you, even in the absence of our pastor, Pastor Dumas, dear Lord. We thank you for our First Lady's presence here on today, dear Lord. We thank you for those who are present in this place, dear Lord. We thank you for those who are watching via social media, Lord. And we just say, thank you, Lord. May I decrease, Lord, so that you may increase, Lord. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, because today is the day that you have made, Lord. Today is the day that you have made, Lord. Let us rejoice, Lord. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it, Lord. Dear Lord, I just say thank you. Thank you. chapter of Luke beginning at verse beginning at verse 1 the 22nd chapter of Luke beginning at verse 1 and it says now the festival an unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas. Judas was one of the 12, one of the 12 disciples. And Judas went to the chief priest and of the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. And he consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. We don't stop there. We won't stop there. We go on. We go on. We start back at verse 47 where it says, while he was still speaking, a crowd came up and a man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? For a topic today, I chose be mindful of your ride or die. Be mindful of your ride or die. Even Jesus was betrayed. Even Jesus was betrayed. Who was Judas? Who was Judas? Judas was one of the twelve disciples. He was someone who was chosen by Jesus to be one of his right hand men. And yet he betrayed him. Jesus knew that Judas was a Jesus knew that he was a embezzler and a thief, but he was still given the position of treasurer. That's a high position. That's somebody who's trusted with your most pride possessions. But Judas betrayed him. What by definition is betray? Betray is to expose to danger by treacherously giving information to an enemy. Unintentionally revealing or to be evidence of. 
The act of betrayal is a violation of a person's trust or confidence of a moral standard. How is it that we as human think that we are above being betrayed when even Jesus was betrayed? Oftentimes, betrayal takes place at the hands of a, does not take place at the hands of a stranger. Usually in order to betray, one must have built some sort of foundation that consists of trust. In other words, trust that hasn't been established can't be betrayed, can't be destroyed. Some of the instances where we have built trust is our God and servant relationships, our marriage and dating relationships our parent and children relationships, amongst our siblings, even our employee-employer relationships are all things that are built on trust. All of these things built on trust. But then we find that Judas, one of the 12, one of the 12 disciples came to a place where he chose money, chose money over his loyalty to God, to Jesus. He chose money. How many times have we been betrayed by those, not strangers, but again, how many times have we been new in Christ. And we were all shouting, to God be the glory, quoting scriptures left and right. You couldn't beat us making it to the church house. You couldn't beat us praying in the morning, praying in the midday hour, or praying at night. Our marital relationships, we go before people and before God and we make a commitment before God that we are going to be in this, just the three of us. The three of us meaning Christ, the husband, and the wife. But how many times have we been betrayed through adultery or some other form of deception? in our marital or our dating relationships, in our parent and children relationships. That should be one of the strongest bonds we have. But how many times are we turning on the news and we're finding that there's a parent and their mate that are committing child abuse or sexual acts against the children? How many times? and our sibling relationships. In Genesis, it speaks of Joseph being portrayed by his brothers. In friendships, how many times have you been coerced to do something and someone tells you, I have your back. I got you until the wheels fall off. They will even take you to that place when they are about to deceive you. How many times? In the employer and employee relationship, you're hired for a job where you're expected to be there on time. Where you are expected to perform the duties that you are hired to do. But how many times have you said, I can be a few minutes late? Or I'm going to call in today it's just a little white lie. But we are deceiving someone who gave us the opportunity for employment. So just imagine that Jesus selected the disciples from all walks of life. The 12 disciples, they were just ordinary men. They were fishermen, tax collectors, 
And Judas, who was a treasurer, but also a thief and an embezzler. <sighs> but being a disciple of God, you have to experience hardships. Sometimes you're going to fail in life. Sometimes you're going to be placed in situations where you doubt, but you're going to follow Jesus anyway. Yes. It says that the qualities of discipleship is someone who is willing to go and share the good news to non-believers. That was Judas. He was among the 12 that was supposed to spread the good news. They are there to teach. They exhibit a love for God, a love for others. They stand out in a crowd. They deny themselves, being firm in God's word. They show fellowship with other believers. They are imitators of Christ. They are dedicated, steadfast, and investing in missions. And to me, a disciple sounds pretty much like a modern day ride or die. Right. The definition of a ride or die is extreme loyalty to someone or something. A person, and by this definition, it says it's usually a woman, but we know that that ride or die could be anyone. It is someone who's willing to do anything, anything for their partner, for their friends or family, and even in the face of danger. So there is clearly a parallel between a disciple and a ride or die, a homie, a bestie, a trusted, and a loyal friend. I remember when I was growing up, Whenever I brought somebody to introduce them to my grandmother or to my mother, I was more concerned by telling them what that person's name was. <laughs> and forgive me, mama, for calling you by name, but Lorraine and Alice didn't care what your name was. What they were more concerned about was that famous question, who your folks? We had to, because they wanted to know who your folks were. Because it didn't matter that you were Susie, that you were Jane or Johnny. They are doing an unofficial background check. And that reaches my first point. I didn't understand it quite as much then as I do now. But what they were doing and what they were conducting was an unofficial background check because being young, when someone says that they are your friends, we just take them at their word. So number one, you must conduct a background check. That's defined as an investigation into a person's origin or previous history. It's not to say that they're incapable of changing. However, the criminal background check, I said criminal there, but it's just a background check. It provides some sort of insight as to where the morals and the values or the reasoning of a person originate. You can't get hired on a job without there first being an interview and that interview is also an unofficial background check before they run the legal criminal background check. Just imagine inviting your family and your friends over for a family cookout, a family reunion, or some other gathering. Imagine that there are no uninvited guests in your presence, and that, but there is actually someone because of the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment reveals to you that there is someone in your presence that means you more harm than good. 
Now imagine disclosing to your guests that you know that there is someone in attendance that you foresee betraying you. That is what Jesus did in what we now call the Last Supper. In Luke 21 it says, but the hands of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. So that's someone who's eating my food, somebody who's driving my car, somebody living in my house, someone who is beside me on my job day to day, somebody that I call my ride or die. Their hand is so close to me. Their hand is so close to my spouse, to my children, to my food. They may even prepare my food. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is going to be with mine on the table. The hand that Jesus was referring to was that of Judas. Let's take a look at Judas again, because we know that he was one of the 12 disciples. We know that he was a treasurer, also known as a thief and an embezzler. Jesus knew Judas' background. He even did a background check. But it was necessary in order for the crucifixion to take place and every step along the way to go in order, Jesus had to hire somebody for the job that he knew was going to betray him. When Satan entered into Judas, then Judas sold out Jesus. How many times as a teenager or have you told your child don't go in any store with somebody if you don't know if they got money. Don't you dare get in that car if you know they've been drinking. Don't you dare. And that's how the sentence begins. Don't you dare. And how many times have you had to pick up the phone and call mama or call daddy and say, I remember what you said. But I got in that car anyways. I remember what you said, but I went in that store anyway. I remember what you said. I know you said that he didn't come from good seed or she didn't come from good seed. But I dated them anyways. Judas chose money over his loyalty. He chose money over his loyalty to Jesus. How many times do you think your friend or your ride or die will sell you out for money? In exchange for Jesus, Judas, Judas was given 30 pieces of silver, equating to what now is $600. He gave up Jesus, Jesus for $600. And in turn, Jesus gave his life a priceless exchange, shed his blood as a sacrifice for all of our sins. It wasn't the money that was evil in the exchange, but rather Judas' love for money. But 1 Timothy 6 and 10 states, for the love of money, it doesn't, sometimes we misquote it and we say, money is the root of all evil. But 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 10 says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Yet many of us sit back and we say, that's my ride or die. I know they'll be with me until the end. But how many times are we are seeing the frequency of marriages ending in divorce? How many times are we seeing children being abused? And now in some instances, the parents are being abused by their children. There was an article some years ago where there was an up and coming rapper 
who was an only child and his mother owned a famous boutique. An only child who was set to inherit everything. The child, well, he was an adult, but he was still her child, her only child, someone that she nurtured, someone that she birthed, someone that she clothed and fed and put a roof over his head. That same young man arranged for his mother to be murdered for an insurance policy that was set at $100,000. How dare we put a price on our parents' life? He flashed money in videos. He even arrived at her funeral late. After the fact, he went into an advocacy for others who have lost their lives due to gun violence. He was an advocate. Just to find out later that he was splurging, splurging on this money, and then the plot came out that that child that she entrusted was the ultimate source of her death and betrayal. So when we come to this, we see that number one, we need to do a background check. We need to thoroughly investigate. We need to do what the mamas and the grandmamas of the old days did. We need to do a further investigation as to who we are allowing in our space. And once we do that, we need to evaluate those in position. Just because you were hired for the job doesn't mean that you are still qualified for the job. Sometimes God has to reevaluate us. Sometimes we can still quote scriptures. Sometimes we can still pray over others, but that doesn't mean that we are still qualified for the position. So we need to do the background check, number one. We need to evaluate those in position, number two. And number three, we must compensate. Compensate, and what that means is we have to return something for the work that's put in. So when it comes to our God-child relationship or God-servant relationship, we need to pour back into God. We can never repay him for his sacrificing of his only son for us. But we still need to be obedient to his word. For the marital relationships, we need not enter into them unless we know that we are fully prepared and that we are going to use God as our lamppost, that we are going to stray away from darkness. In our parent-children relationships, we need to know that our children can rely on us to do what we are destined to do for them, that in return and in our old age, that they in turn will do the same for us. In our siblings' relationships, we saw that in Genesis that Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, but even in the end, even in the end, even through all the humiliation, he still welcomed them back. There are some of us who are not speaking to our siblings. There are some siblings who are not speaking to us. But God says it's time to turn it around and bring it back. It's time to stop the betrayal. It's time to stop everything that is not like him. And those employer-employee relationships, it's time to, to do the right thing. If we can't show up for the job, if we can't show up for the job, then we need to step back 
and allow the ones who are qualified to step in. Dear Heavenly Father, we just say thank you. Even for the betrayals in our lives, we say thank you. Dear Lord, for when things didn't work out, Lord, we say thank you. Dear Lord, for those relationships that didn't quite see fruitations, we say thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, we know that all friendships aren't like Thelma and Louise. That's an old movie that was put out some years ago where one of the two women suffered a crime at the hands of another. She was victimized, but her friend was truly a ride or die. When it came time to defend her, she wasn't like some of our friends who hops in the car even go with you to that destination, even get out the car. She came with a boxing gloves on, ready to fight. And she fought a good fight because she took a life in defense for her friend. And in appreciation, because that friend could have gone her own way. She could have turned her head and pretended that it didn't happen but she didn't. She took off with her friend who defended her in that car. And the ending of the movie is somewhat controversial, but we know that she was truly her ride or die. So today I'm asking you to be a ride or die for Jesus. Be a ride or die for someone who laid down their life for us. Be that ride or die for someone who is more loyal than any human relationship we will ever experience. Be a ride or die for Jesus. But most ultimately know that when we are sitting here and putting people on pedestals, we still must remain in being mindful of our ride or die, because even Jesus was betrayed. A word of God for the people of God. I thank you. Even when it seems that trouble is on every side. Even when we can't 
even hold our heads up, Lord, because we are just so discombobulated, Lord. Even when we have Asian parents, Lord. Even when we don't go from one day to the next, Lord, if they'll be here, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord, because we know that ultimately you're turning it around for us, Lord. There's somebody that cried all last night, Lord. They didn't even have the will to live, Lord. Somebody contemplated suicide, Lord. Somebody just wanted to end it all, Lord. But this morning, they woke up, Lord. For that, we thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we just say, as humbly as we know how, the Lord, that we know that you'll turn it around for us. We won't let old circumstances dictate new, new, new ventures, Lord. Old circumstances, new ventures, Lord. Old circumstances, new ventures, Lord. Because you're going to do a new thing in us, Lord. When we woke up this morning, the devil screamed, there she goes again. There he goes again. There they go playing in that church, Lord. But here we are, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Somebody went in the kitchen, Lord, and they didn't even have food to prepare for their family, Lord. In some kind of way, there might have been a can or a bag of rice or something in a corner that they thought they missed. But God, that was you. Dear Lord, there was somebody who didn't know what to wear to church this morning. And you told them to just get up and just come, Lord. That was you, Lord. There was somebody who said that due to the rising cost of that price, Lord, that I'm not going to make it today. But you said, go. And they came, Lord. That was you, Lord. Dear Lord, we just say thank you. Dear Lord, we say thank you. Dear Lord, whatever it is that they're in need of, prayer right now, whatever it is that they need, dear Lord, I ask that you touch every last one of them, Lord. I ask that you, that you hold them, Lord, that you walk them, Lord, even in our adult years, Lord. We need somebody to hold us, Lord. We need somebody to rock us, Lord, and to wipe away our But you've gone ahead of me, Lord. You've gone ahead of them, Lord. you prepared a place for us, Lord. And we know that when we sign a line, sign our name to a loan, dear Lord, when we sit there and we're trying to check that bank account, Lord, we know that it's already done because you want to send us to the place to put our names on that line, dear Lord, because where it says co-sign a Lord, you co-sign for us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, that car, that car that might be just coming in barely on two or three wheels, Lord. <laughs> you put us in the midst of others on these dangerous highways, and you still kept us, Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, even for the pain that's in our body, Lord, some of us experience pain from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet on a daily basis, Lord. Some days we want to go in the towel and say, Lord, I give up, Lord. But we are asking right now that you remove the hurt, that you remove the pain, that you make us new, Lord, is my prayer. And I say, thank you, Lord. For whatever it is, Lord, I might not have called out their situation, Lord, but you know their situation. Dear Lord, we just ask that they confess it right now. And that whatever they brought to the altar, Lord, that they leave it right here. Whatever conditions they came in with, just leave it right here, Lord. Leave it right here, Lord. Because today is the day that you have made. Today is a new day, Lord. Today is a day for new beginnings, Lord. Today is a day that we close old chapters. And if we have to shut the whole book, Lord. 
Lord. We just want to throw that book and toss it to the side, Lord. Write, write it on new pages, Lord. Right now, Lord. Our new start starts right now, Lord. Lord, we just say thank you. If there's anyone needing prayer, right? Maybe stay at the altar. If you are in need of prayer right now,
Lord, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. We just pray that this word did not fall on deaf ears today, God, but that we heard your word, Lord God, and we're going to be doers of what your word says for us to do, God. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. given her scripture reference and just amazed how the Lord works. You know, we can all tell when we on one accord. And I had gone to the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter, and I've been reading a couple, two or three verses before we partake of the Lord's Supper. Amen? And you know, and, and the Lord reminds us, the more we do this, the more we recognize him. So we're reading from Luke 22, beginning at the 14th verse, because we're going to go down to a few verses. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And so with those reasons, we're going to take our bread. First of all, he said, and he took the cup and he said thanks to take this and divide it among yourselves. The 19th verse tells us, and he took the bread, if you have your bread, and gave thanks and break it. And you know, if you if you remember, whatever whenever the Lord does something before He thanks it, He breaks it. Even when He fed those five thousand, He broke bread and He thanked it. And you know, we have to be thankful for whatever He gives us. So today, we, this is not we know this is not His body, but it represents His body. So if you have the bread in your hand, raise it up, please. We're gonna break it. We've already given thanks for it, Amen. Let us partake it. And then the 20th verse tells us, likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup, you have your cup, raise your cup up, please. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But we know this is not blood, this, but this represents life to us. Amen? Amen. Let's drink. If you will, let us stand and repeat the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
what deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I just want to leave this a word with you. Let's keep, continue to keep our pastor in our prayers. First Lady Dumas, the family in our prayers. I think many times we take the power of prayer for granted. But there is, that's a tool we can use. The power of prayer works. Amen. Amen. If all minds are clear. Okay. And we know how we do our offering here at Stonewell. There are several ways on Facebook that lets us know several uh, items or avenues of giving. But here, as you go out in the sanctuary, you got, there's going to be a bucket there for you to deposit your, your offerings and your givings. We also have someone there probably who would take your card if you want to give that way. But you know, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And also, thank you, Minister Lyons. Today is our first Sunday sacrificial offering. You need a blue envelope. We know what that's for. The Lord has really blessed Stonewell. Amen, 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 amen. And he continues to do that. At this time, if it's in order, Evangelist Christ, would like to have a word. We'd like to see you this morning. Let's give her another hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anything else? We're going to ask our speak of the hour to dismiss us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good in it. Minister Stinson for Amen. Minister Ann Stinson for being Amen. in attendance on today. I thank you for family and friends who are joining us here today and supporting my journey. If all hearts and minds are clear as we leave this place. Dear Lord, I just ask that you just cover each and every one of us, Lord. Dear Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be back in the building to be able to just worship, Lord. Dear Lord, I just thank you for allowing us to leave it at the altar. I thank you for this new week. We're here on the first day of a new week, Lord. There was some here on last week that were not present on today, Lord, because they've taken their heavenly flight, Lord. But we made it, Lord. And for that, we say thank you. So, Lord, as, and I don't want to be selfish, Lord, but I say a special prayer for my Father, Lord. I just ask that you just continue to touch him, Lord. I ask that whatever is your will, that it be done, Lord. And that you just give us the strength. Just give us the strength to be able to accept whatever is your will. But dear Lord, I ask that you just cover everybody that's going through something right now. That you dismiss us from this place, dear Lord. But know that as we exit out the doors, dear Lord, that we will not be separated from you, Lord. Dear Lord, we won't be like Judas, Lord. We won't turn our backs on you, Lord. We won't betray you, Lord, because we know that you paid the ultimate price. And for that, Lord, we just say thank you. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, we do pray. Just saying thank I and amen, amen, and thank God, amen.